Hello everyone, this is Mr. Bradley and in this video I'm going to cover squares and square roots. We're going to look at what squaring is, we're going to look at the perfect squares, we're going to talk about exponents and we're also going to look at um, square roots and how to simplify squares and square roots on your calculators, different types of calculators and what you may see as you're doing this. So first some basic uh, vocabulary. What do we mean when we talk about squares in math? So you've probably seen um, squares or heard E equals MC squared, um, the famous relativity equation. And this number here is read as 4 squared or 4 to the second power. But squared means an exponent that is to the second power. So I've already thrown a couple of vocab words out there. Let's identify what we're talking about. This is the number 4 and on it is a smaller floating number we call an exponent. That's the exponent, the exponent's two. And this exponent can be any number, really. But when the exponent is two, we refer to it as being squared. This is four squared. The four, which is the bigger number, the, the regular size number if you're just doing math, is called the base. The base is the number that the exponent is on. So here, the exponent is on the four, the four is the base, the two is the exponent, and this is read as four squared. Now, what does that mean? So here I drew a square, and the square is four centimeters long. Now, if you know anything about squares, squares are the same length on all sides. So this, this square would be four centimeters by four centimeters. Those are the dimensions of the square. Now, if I was to find the area of this, area is calculated in square units. So I have four units cutting the square this way, four centimeters and then I have four units going this way. One, two, three, four by one, two, three, four. The area is the combined total of all the inside squares. If you count them, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, there are sixteen square units or square centimeters. Now, four times four equals sixteen. And we can represent 4 times 4 as 4 squared. 4 to the second power, which is read as 4 squared, which equals 16. So when you multiply a number times itself, it's called squaring that number. This is 4 squared, which is 16. Now, you can do this with any number, but we're specifically going to look at whole numbers because you can square three, let's say. Remember three squared is three times three, which is nine. You could square 10. 10 squared is 100 because it's 10 times 10. So you can imagine a square that was 10 by 10 would have 100 of these. A square that was three by three, and actually I can fill it in right here, a three by three square has nine square units. So that would be nine. Now these numbers, 16, 9, 100, all have a special term. They're called perfect squares. If we take all the whole numbers starting with 1, so let's take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. We'll stop at 12. My box ran out of space. Now I'm going to square all of these numbers, so I'll square 1. 1 squared, which is 1 times 1, is 1. 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, is 4. 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, is 9. 4 squared, we already did, that's 16, it's 4 times 4. 5 squared, which is 5 times 5, is 25. 6 squared, which is 6 times 6, is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared, whoops, I almost root 8 to the 8th power, but I'm going to do 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. 9 squared is 81. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared, 
is 121, it's 11 times 11, and 12 squared is 144. Now, these numbers over here, the 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, and 144 are all called perfect squares. These numbers represent whole numbers that have been squared. Again, multiplied by themselves, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, etc. Knowing these perfect squares can really make your life easier. You should definitely at least know up to 12 squared, 144, because these should already be in your multiplication anyway. So you really should see 49 and know that that's 7 squared, or you should be able to look at 8 squared and know that that's 8 times 8, which means 64. You should be able to do those without a calculator, just knowing what the term square means. Now let's show you how to do this on a calculator because sometimes you won't be able to know these. So here at the bottom I have a little check. Let's see if we know what we're doing here. So I have 15 squared, 5 squared, 23 squared, and 19 squared. So are any of these doable within this range? And I can already see, oh wait, I, I should know 5 squared. 5 squared, which means 5 times 5 is 25. That's what 5 squared is. Now you won't always know, so 15 squared I might not know, and 23 squared I might not know, and 19 squared I might not know. So you need to be able to do them on a calculator. So we're going to show you two different ways to do them on a calculator. First, let's look at this. This is a, a TI-342. It's a scientific calculator. A lot of people have seen these or have something that's very, very close to this. Now, Let's check out 15 squared. Turn the calculator on. 15 squared. Now, of course, you can just type in 15 times 15 in order to figure that out. It's 225. Or there's a shortcut button for squaring. And if you look right here, there's a little x squared button. And what you do is you type in the base. So the base, remember, is the big number. That's 15. So I type in 15. And then if you hit the x squared button, you'll notice there's a little squared on the 15. And now all I have to do is hit equals or enter. And there it is again, 225. So there's two ways to do it. You can either actually type in the 15 times 15 or you can type the 15, hit the x squared button, and then get 225. Now I prefer the x squared button because it's faster. So let's try this again. Now I'm going to do 23 squared. I already knew that 5 squared was 5 times 5 because I know that one. So 23 squared I'll try. 23, again, I typed in my base, 23, and now I'm going to hit x squared. Notice it puts a little exponent on the 23. When I hit equals, I get 529, which is 23 squared. Now, not all calculators are like this. This is a great calculator. It's a very nice calculator. If you have one of these, awesome. Now, these calculators are a little different. These are the ones we have in class. They're not as nice, but they still can do all these functions. So let's turn this guy on. Again, if I had 15 squared, I could still do 15 times 15. Notice that it's not keeping anything on the screen. The other calculator, you can see what you're doing as you're typing it, which makes it a lot nicer. So let's clear that. Here I have 19 squared. It's my last example, 19 squared. So if you look at the calculator, you can notice there is an x squared button right here in the middle. There's still an x squared button. So the button itself is exactly the same. It's in a different spot, but it's exactly the same. It says x squared. This is a shortcut key for squaring any number you want. Like remember 5 was 5 times 5. If I hit 5, so I'm still going to type the base first, and then I'm going to hit x squared. Now on this calculator, when I do that, it doesn't show me an exponent. It just simplifies the square. So it did 5 times 5 for me. So now I'm going to do this 19 squared by typing the base, which is 19. And then I'm going to hit x squared. And I get 361 because it says 19 times 19, which is 361. It's nice to not have to do 
that math when the calculator can do it for you. Okay? Now, that's how to do squares. In my next video, which is the B part of this video, I'm going to look at what's called square roots. And this is when you go the other way, when you are given this number and you have to tell me this number. Okay? So that's in my next video, but that's what squares are. Exponents, bases, the perfect squares. Those are all things that you're going to have to know along with how to figure it out on a calculator. Good luck.